Hello, my name is Jan Thielemann and in this video I want to show you how you can uh, add new fields to existing windows really really quick without writing a single line of code or even accessing the database. So uh, here I have the sales order window and let's say I want um, yeah, one of these uh, collapsible um, separators here and I want my own separator and I want um, some custom fields in it and yeah how do we accomplish that first um, we have to log in on the system client with the system administrator role and then we have to do two things we have to add new columns in our existing tables and then we have to add the fields on the existing tab. So let's start with the columns. So the table we are looking for is the C order table. And if you are not sure about which table it is, just open the window, click on the um, record info button here. Whoops. Uh, it looks like we have to um, have a valid entry we can um, choose. Yeah, then we can click on the record info and then it says it's the C order table. So let's search for this table name. And here we have our table. So now we go to um, columns and here we add um, a new column just by clicking on the new record button. So, um, as always, you have to fill all the mandatory fields, otherwise you cannot save. And the first field is the system element field. And each um, column on the database um, has one system element, which uh, represents this. And the system element is, for example, used for um, determining the name, um, which will be used as the um, name here and the column name. And yeah, the print text, if you print a report with this column, you can enter the description and uh, um, comment or hint. This is uh, what you see here. And uh, yeah, if you do this for your own system elements, then when you click on your column uh, in your window, then you will um, get displayed your own tooltips here. So uh, we don't have a column name yet. Um, if we would use, for example, the M... Um, product ID, then we would get all this um, stuff for free, but we don't want to use uh, AD product ID on our sales order head. So what could we um, use? Uh, I don't even know, <laughs> but uh, let's just have uh, some examples. Um, let's say we make a column named SS. And the name is some stupid text. And the print text is the same. Uh, this is my description. This is my comment help. Okay, save this. And now we can use our column, uh, our system element in our column. So um, since this is a stupid text field, I suggest that we use text as the reference and let's say we want to store about 4000 characters. Now we can save this. Um, yeah, uh, I don't want to talk about default logic and read-only logic because I already talked about this in another video. But there's another thing you um, have to do. Um, if you create a real um, column. Of course, you could um, create virtual columns, but that's also a, um, another topic, topic of another video. But um, yeah, you can use virtual columns and um, normal columns, which are then um, synchronized against the database and not calculated. So to do this, we um, just created our column. Uh, we can hit the synchronize column button. And you see the um, SQL statement, which was um, executed. Uh, I'm not sure if um, C 
CLOP is the right um, the right SQL class for text, but um, yeah, let's see if we can get this working. So now what I did is uh, I um, started a process which um, executes an SQL command to create the new column in our table. So um, there's also the other way. You can first um, create the, ta uh, the columns in your tables and then on the table header, you can um, use the create columns from DB process to um, create the um, columns from the database, which are not already, whoops, sorry, which are not already in the columns um, tab right here. Uh, you can create them with different entity types. So what I normally do uh, when I have a fresh uh, installation of item Pierre and I want to add my custom um, columns, what I do is I um, run the process before I create my column on the database and I use it as um, yeah, dictionary or as item Pierre or whatever and create them because if there are new columns in the database which are not already yet in the application dictionary, they will get um, created. So what I do is um, I create them with one of these types or I create another type to create them with them. And then I add my column to the database and run the process again with the type user maintained. And then only my one new added column or however how many columns I added, um, they get the user maintained type. And uh, why this is um, important or interesting, or you could even um, change the type afterwards, I think. Um, where's the, ah, yes, here it is, the entity type. Yes, yeah, so you can um, change this, this afterwards. And why this is interesting, because we now have to add our columns um, to the window. So here we go to the sales order and go to the sales order tab. And here we have this process to create the fields and to create fields can also take the entity type and only create the fields which are not already added of a given entity type. And because only my uh, columns have the entity type user maintained, I now can select user maintained or I could even um, choose a date since when it was created. So I could um, run the process with uh, user maintained um, when I create uh, columns from the database for the first time and then add my column, run it for the second time and then choose the date since when my column was added. But I don't need this yet. So I um, simply run the process and you'll see some stupid text was added. And now in my fields, I can choose my, where is it? My simple, uh, my, my stupid, some stupid text, there it is. And yeah, this is um, my new field. And I said I want the field in one of these um, collapsible separators here. And they are called uh, field groups. So here I create a new field group and I call it um, some stupid fields. Save this. change the field group, go to my tab and uh, here on the tab and the window tab and field window, we have this interesting um, process called tab editor. And what this does is it starts a little um, pop up right here where you can preview the tab as it would look like right now when you open the window. And you can, for example, um, yeah, um, double click on a field to enlarge it or you can hold down control and double click it and make it uh, shorter. You can drag fields around. You can, um, I believe, drag and drop them. Yes. To uh, also You can drag and drop them around to hide them or show them. 
Um, here you see the visible fields. Here you see the um, not yet visible fields, but they could get visible. And um, yeah, if you are, uh, if you think your layout looks good, then you hit the OK button, which I won't do now because I don't want the one field to hide. But um, yeah, you see my field uh, is still here with the field group. And yeah, the fields which you add will um, get added at the end of the of the list. So if you want a field up here, you have to drag it around. Okay, so I don't have to do additional setup. So I can go back to my garden world client. Uh, here I close the window. And because I made a change in the application dictionary, the change is not immediately taken. Uh, in this window here, I opened the sales order window before and then the window got cached. So what I have to do to um, see my changes, um, just to show you. Oh, it got already added. That's new to me. That seems to be a new feature in the um, 3.0 version, I guess. Hey, that's cool. I don't even have to reset the cache to see my new field. I like that. I like that. And I have to choose mandatory fields. And I have to choose organization so I can choose a warehouse. And I have to choose a business partner. Whoever saved this. And now I would like to see if um, CLOP as SQL type is okay. So let me jump around between that and that. Yeah, that's what I um, what I thought. Um, you see that these little, uh, I don't know the English name, uh, but yeah, you see them, they got added. So um, I know why this is the case. Uh, there's a class called display type Java in the org Ampere base bundle in, I believe, org compare util. I can show it to you on uh, Bitbucket. Uh, that's, um, yeah, if you uh, watched my previously videos, uh, you saw it in another video, the same problem when I tried to create a new column with chart and synchronize it to the database. Uh, it had a problem because it saw um, chart was a text and not an integer field. And I want to show you the problem real quick. And I believe if nobody else already did it, uh, I will refactor this small problem. So why is this so freaking slow? Ah, don't I have the source code on the machine? I believe so. Ah, there it is. Org compare util display type. Here it is, the display type Java um, class. And yeah, here's this method, um, get SQL data type and yeah you see it um, for example is it checks if uh, the display type is an ID type and then it does some freaky additional checks for image and um, binary and whatever and then it has this freaky fallback to um, watcher and uh, this is, by the way, the reason why you can't synchronize chart against the database right now, because you would have to reference the AD chart ID. But uh, when you synchronize uh, or use the synchronize process, um, you would get a watcher, which is text and yeah, then it doesn't work. However, um, I think that's another reason why I prefer adding um, 
things to my database first and synchronize them because first of all um, I save the step to create a system element and uh, sometimes it can happen that the system element has not a real good name but then you um, simply zoom into the system element change the name refresh the entry and everything is fine um, this way you have to create the column first check if it's the right um, the right type and if not then you have to connect to the database again and check uh, change the type um, so yeah um, maybe we can improve this uh, by yeah advancing the display type java class uh, then we don't have to need anymore to connect to the database and i think that would be um, really nice but uh, i think today you saw some methods how you can add your custom fields to existing windows which is oops this one okay i hope this video helps and i see you in the next video